Hey, thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to talk about how to engrave a tumbler from start to finish. I've got a Thunder Laser Nova 24 laser here. I'm going to be using a Rotoboss Low Roller Rotary, and I'm going to show you how to take a simple 30 ounce JDS tumbler, put a design on it on two opposing sides, and we'll kick it out in a matter of no time. So let's go ahead and get into how I start the setup on the rotary side. Okay, when you get your rotary and you're ready to put it into your machine, you always want to make sure to drop your Z table all the way down to the bottom. One of the things to keep in mind is depending on the size of tumbler that you're going to engrave with your low roller, uh, depends on whether you have to take the honeycomb out. Um, if it's a normal 20 ounce or 30 ounce tumbler, you don't have to take this honeycomb out. And in some cases, I like to leave the honeycomb in because if I'm doing a lot of tumblers, I take some uh, these orange pins here and actually secure this rotary in one spot. So as I'm changing the cups out or the tumblers out, I don't have to worry about this uh, rotary moving at all. So I like to leave the rotor, or excuse me, the honeycomb in the, the, the laser. If you're going to be doing larger tumblers, you may have to take the honeycomb out and that's what these big feet are made for, is for the, uh, the aluminum slats that are underneath this honeycomb. So you don't necessarily have to take your honeycomb out. When you put your rotary in your laser, once the Z table is all the way down, you want to make sure that this uh, your stepper motor is on the left hand side and you'll notice that this is where the uh, cord is coming out. A lot of people will turn this around because it's shorter for the cord to plug into the uh, the outlet on your right hand side but then all of your designs will be backwards. So make sure that your uh, your motor at least on the low rolled excuse me the Roto Boss low roller and I believe on all the other uh, Roto Boss uh, rotaries, they need to be on the left hand side. And then on, at least on the Thunders, they have a nice seven pin adapter here. It just plugs in right over here. You plug that in. The controller auto senses that you've got the rotary plugged in. That's all you have to do. You don't have to flip any dip switches. You don't have to do anything other than that. The rest of it will all be in the Lightburn software. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, place this rotary within uh, where it needs to be. And one thing that I want to show you that's important. <clears throat> you see these sensors over here. This autofocus sensor shoots a beam of light, comes across here and it senses it. If for some reason this tower right here is in line with this with this auto sensor, auto focus sensor, your Z table will not move up when you get to focusing uh, the height on your cup. So be sure that this tower is either in front of or behind the uh, focus sensor because if it's in line and that little you can see right here see that little uh, orange dot that's lit up that means that the uh, the sensor autofocus sensor has been triggered and you're not gonna get the Z table to move up or down okay watch what happens when I just push the rotary back just a little bit that orange light goes away and now the rotary, this tower, is not in the way and you'll be able to move your, your Z table up and down. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is make sure that our, our uh, tower here is out of the way. Um, the next thing that we're going to want to do is we've got to make sure that this, that your rotary is in the same plane as your x-axis otherwise your design on your tumbler will be crooked so you have to make sure to line these up and that's what there's a dot here on mine and then what I did is I just took and uh, put a 
put a dot halfway. This is half inch wide. Just at a quarter inch, I put a black dot right there. And you're going to see what we're going to use that for. We're going to align the red dot pointer on the laser to here and to here to make sure that our X uh, gantry is uh, parallel with our rotary. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is get this um, rotary in parallel with your X axis. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my cup. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I want this cup to be uh, on the both rollers on both sides. Just a little bit of space from the base plate. You don't want it touching, so I usually give it about an eighth of an inch away. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do before I get too carried away about lining this up is I want to level this cup. So I'm going to take a regular line level and I'm going to go ahead and put it on this tumbler. And you can see that, the, that this end needs to come up, so I'm going to turn this dial until we get it nice and level. And at this point, my tumbler is level. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring the laser head over the top of my cup. Now this is where you want to be real careful. Um, you want to make sure that your Z is all the way down and you want to take your time if this is the first time you've done that, this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive the laser head over the top of that. And so what I wanted to do is I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to have a head crash. You just want to make sure that everything's low enough uh, before you do this. And the idea here is I'm going to move this head back and forth until this red light. So I'm going to get the red light and then I'm just going to move. I'm just going to push the rotary back until I get the red light lined up with that black dot. Then I'm going to left arrow over until I see that that red light is on that black dot. And if I would need to move it, I can just hold on to this end because this, this end is lined up and move this back and forth just a little bit until the red dot is uh, in line with that black dot. I'm going to come back this way one more time just to check it. And now basically, what we're seeing is the red light, or the red dot is on this black dot and is on this black dot. And now I know that the rotary is parallel with the gantry. Now, if I was doing a bunch of cups, what I would do is I would take, I would take uh, some orange clips and I would just go ahead and pin this down and make sure that it's not going to move. Don't have to do this, especially if you're only doing one or two cups. Um, not a big deal. Usually this stays put. Um, but that's how you make sure that your rotary is parallel with your X gantry. Next, we're going to go ahead and uh, focus our tumbler. Okay, to focus our tumbler to our laser, we're going to drive the laser head to the middle of the tumbler. And I use my one of my focus gauges and I come up here and you can see right now uh, I usually focus most of my um, tumblers to seven millimeters, not six. I take it out of to focus just a little bit. I uh, feel it looks better. And so we're going to go to seven millimeters. I'm going to loosen this up and drop this down. And now we are focused at seven millimeters. One thing I don't recommend you do is just get your tumbler close, but don't try to do the final focusing with your Z movement. Don't do that because you'll have a chance of crashing your head if you do that. Just get it close, put your majoring gauge, use this to drop your laser tube down, and that way there's really no reason or any chance of you crashing this laser. So don't use your Z up buttons on your controller to get the final focus on this because you're, you're asking for trouble if you do. So now we've got the rotary in parallel, we've got the laser head in focus to the, the engraving surface, 
And the next thing that we're going to need to determine is where our origin is going to be. And so let's go to that next. So when establishing your origin, this is kind of a personal preference situation. A lot of people put their origin on the outside of the cup. I personally like to set the origin between the stainless and where the powder coat starts, only because that's a consistent known spot. And you'll see why I do that when we get to the layout on why it makes sense to me to set that origin right uh, at that point. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is if I would try to set the origin now and move my laser head to exactly that spot because the speed is set at 150 millimeters per second I'm going to have a hard time kind of getting it dialed in. So here's what I'm going to do to make that job easier. I'm going to come over to my controller. I'm going to press speed Right now I'm set at 113 millimeters per second. I'm going to come over here, arrow right twice. I'm going to use the down arrow and I just changed that from 113 millimeters per second to 13 millimeters per second. I'm going to hit enter. And now you'll see that my speed is way slower. It's much more manageable for me to get the finite spot that I need. And right now I'm going to consider that right there as my origin. So I'm going to select the origin button on the controller. And now I basically set up my rotary with my tumbler and everything on the laser is ready to go. The only thing I've got to do now is get into light burn, do the design, and get this cup burned. Okay, to ensure our rotary is connected to Lightburn, we're going to open Lightburn, we're going to come into Devices down here, we're going to make sure that we select our controller and say OK, and you should see Laser Ready right here. Okay, if you don't confirm this, you're probably going to go to your rotary setup and it's not going to give you the numbers that you expect. So make sure that your laser is connected. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to come up to Tools, Come down to Rotary Setup. Now, if this is your first time uh, setting up your rotary, you're going to want to make sure that it's on Roller. You're going to want to enable Rotary. This should be on A Access. You don't ever want to use your Test button. The Test button here in Lightburn does not work with the uh, with the setup for Thunder. So we'll do the framing. Uh, from the controller. So don't use this test button. Uh, the manufacturer start steps per rotation is 4400. That is just a starting point. I will uh, link a uh, steps per rotation video up top for you to take a look at. And this is something that you should do uh, to get your particular steps per rotation. Every machine is just a little bit different. Mine is 4090 for a normal 20 or 30 ounce tumbler. Um, yours may be different, so uh, we'll take a look at that video that I've got linked in uh, up top there, or I will also link it in the description of this video. You want to make sure that you measure the roller diameter of your particular rotary. Now this would be the drive wheels of the rotary on what your uh, uh, tumbler is sitting on uh, and that's got to be as accurate as possible. And then this is the diameter of the top of the tumbler. And I'll show you a picture here. It should be 3.97 inches across and Lightburn's software automatically calculates that is to 12.472 inches in circumference or uh, around the tumbler. Okay. The other thing, if your rotary is talking to the software, you'll see here where it says settings read from controller successfully. If there's an error here, it means that your software, Lightburn software, is not talking to the rotary. And I would unplug the rotary, plug it back in, make sure you have ready here. If this is not ready, make sure you're uh, your software is connected to the laser. But this is something that you're always going to want to confirm that you have connection to your rotary. 
If these are all uh, input properly, you can say OK. And at this point, your, your rotary parameters are set. Now we have to do a, a kind of a template. And I am very big on always generating a template for you to work within. It just makes life a lot easier. So the way I approach it is I create a rectangle that is basically the frame of my design. And what this is, is if you would imagine that tumbler laying horizontally, and if you took the circumference and just kind of stretched it out, this is what this is what it would be. So this would be the width of the engraving surface of the cup. And this would be if you stretched the, the uh, circumference out. Um, I'll show you a picture alongside here so you can kind of get an idea on what I mean. And so how you determine the size of this rectangle determines on the circumference of your uh, measurement. So if you remember, when we went down to rotary setup, our circumference for this particular size of tumbler was 12.72 inches. So I made a rectangle, and the height, the height of this rectangle is 12.72 inches. And then the width is just the engraving width of the tumbler. And this is kind of a personal preference. I typically go from the edge of the powder coating to the where it starts to turn in, show you a picture here. Uh, and that's what determines the width of this template. So this is the circumference of the tumbler, and this is the engraving surface of the tumbler. In this particular case, the engraving surface on that 30 ounce JDS tumbler is 3.3 inches wide. Okay, so when you're looking at this, you're actually looking at the whole design turned 90 degrees, but it's just a little bit easier to, to lay it out this way from my perspective. There's a lot of people that do it differently. This just what makes sense to me. So we've got our frame now. The other thing that we got to make sure that we do is we come down here and we select user origin. And we're also going to select the middle job left origin. So that means that that green arrow is right here on your template. Okay. User origin, middle left. Okay. So now that we've got the rotary parameters taken care of, Let's go ahead and I'll show you how I lay out a simple uh, design. We've got a uh, simple graphic over here, silly boys, silly boy trucks are for girls. Okay, and I'm going to put it in this template. I'm going to put two of the same logo that are going to be 180 degrees apart on the face of the tumbler. And so the first thing that I'm going to do, in case you're wondering how I filled in these uh, graphics, I came up here to window. And um, I can tile this, excuse me, back and forth whether these are filled in or not. As long as they're uh, uh, with a fill command, you can uh, toggle and have them framed. They're just a little bit easier to read. So the first thing that we did is we came in and we made a rectangle. And that rectangle was the height of the rectangle was the circumference of the, uh, the tumbler. And the width was the engraving surface of the tumbler. Um, and so we've got that all done. Uh, next, we brought in a graphic. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure that that graphic is grouped. And it is. And then I'm going to hit the period key to rotate it until I get uh, the top of your tumbler is left. So you want to make sure that your graphic's right. And I'm going to come in here. And I'm going to just bring that over here. And I'm going to just drive this with my arrow keys until the edge of that graphic is touching the very bottom of my template. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is while this is selected, I'm going to hold the shift key down, select the tumbler template, and then I'm going to make sure that that graphic is vertically aligned 
with the center. So now this graphic is centered between uh, the template. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the graphic. And I'm going to right mouse click and say duplicate. And then I'm just going to go ahead and move arrow up. Just move this away. I don't care where it ends up right now. I just need a second graphic. I'm just going to pull this up this way. OK. Now, this is how you get the spacing down as long as your steps per rotation are correct and you've got your uh, circumference correct. Uh, all the rest of this will work out. So the way I figure this is we take the graphic height. So if I click on this, if it's grouped, I know that this height of this graphic is 2.9880 inches tall. And I have two of those. So I took the graphic height times two graphics, and that gave me a total of 5.976 inches. I'm going to take that number and subtract the total circumference of the tumbler, which in this case, if we look at that, it's going to be 12.472. And if we take the 5.976 minus the circumference, it gives us a total of 6.496. Okay, so basically this 6.496 uh, basically is indicating that's the open space that you see here that's not taken up by the graphic. Well, in order to get our equal spacing, I need to divide that in two because we have an open space here and we have an open space here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a rectangle that I'm going to use strictly for spacing. And if I took that 6.496 and divided by 2, that gives us a total of 3.248 inches. And I'm going to make a rectangle that's that tall. I don't care how wide it is because the width uh, doesn't have any bearing on our spacing. So if I created a rectangle here that is 3.248 tall, now what I can do is I can drag this over here. Let me zoom in. And I'm going to just uh, uh, hold the shift key down. Oops, excuse me. The shift and the control key down and get some minus, uh, minute adjustments down here. And I'm just going to move this rectangle until it touches the edge of that graphic. And then without moving this graphic left or right, I'm going to move it down, hold the shift and the control key down, and arrow down until I get that graphic touching there. Now, if we've done our homework and we've calculated, and this is the good thing about using this method is you can verify what you're doing is correct. If I grab this rectangle and move it to the other side, it should all line up. So if I come over here and I move this graphic right to the very edge of that logo, and I come up here, and you can see that this graphic is just ever so slightly on the outside. So if I move it back until it touches, we know that our layout is correct. And so now we've got our layout for our tumbler to be 180 degrees apart based on this spacing. OK, now that we have our layout completed, let's just check a couple of other things. I've been told that this enable rotary uh, doesn't matter whether you have it on or off when it comes to Thunder, but you may have to have it for other uh, manufacturers. And uh, if you don't see this on your, on your uh, light burn, just come up here to the little gearbox, and right here it says show rotary enable on main window. You want to turn that on. So turn that on, enable your rotary. I typically always use leave these on. Again, these are a preference. What that does mean, though, is that I have to select it in order for it to preview. As you can see, it previews properly. I'm going to scrub through it because remember, what you see is what you get when it comes to this preview window. And it looks like 
That's all going to be good. It's going to be about eight minutes for the front and back of this cup. We're good there. We're going to come up here. We're going to make sure that all of our black, our, our template is turned off, our red is turned off. The only thing we want to engrave is a blue, and that's going to be on. Now, this is for a 20, uh, Nova 24 60-watt laser. I'm going to run that at 400 millimeters per second at 60% power. Again, this is somewhat of a personal preference. I find that this, is, uh, this particular setting works well for my laser. Yours might be different. And so I think we're all ready to go. Um, everything looks good. And at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the file over to the laser and then we'll frame it once we have this file loaded in the controller on the laser. So I'm going to say send. We're going to say OK. And it should be sitting in the controller now. OK, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hit file. Your design comes up, I'm going to hit enter. And once I have my file up, now I can hit the frame button just to make sure that the rotary is working. So if I bring, the, uh, bring it over here and I hit the frame button, it's going to come down. Again, when you're framing, you want to make sure that the spacing here is the same as the spacing is going to be down here. Uh, does it just look right? In other words, is your design centered on your cup based on the way you intended it in the, um, in the design? And the, the framing it from the controller also just verifies that everything's working, and I highly recommend you do that. Um, uh, you know, these cups aren't cheap, and you don't want to ruin it any more than you have to, so it's an easy way to go ahead and just verify uh, what's going on. So we framed it, the spacing looks good, everything's turning, there's nothing that's bound up. Um, I think we're pretty much ready to go. When you pull the uh, tumbler off the uh, rotary, it's not going to look very good, meaning you've got just a lot of stuff you've got to wipe off. And so what you'll want to do is get yourself a little LA Awesome at the dollar store. There's several other things that can clean this off, but I find LA Awesome. Uh, just spray this down, let it sit for a minute, use a magic eraser, uh, and scrub this stainless, and uh, your design will come out great. And as you can see, We've got a design on this side, and we've got a design on this side. They're pretty much opposing. Let's see what it looks like cleaned up. And just like that, you've got a nice tumbler with a design on both sides. Took about six and a half minutes to uh, do this 30 ounce tumbler. They shine up nice. Well, as you can see, tumblers are not really hard to do. Once you get your uh, rotary set up right and your template dialed in, um, pretty straightforward. Um, I hope this information was helpful. And if you please like and subscribe, I'd sure appreciate it. Until next time, have a great day.